greatest examples you'll find in the scriptures of the love of God. In every chapter, there's some tremendous things revealed. I'd like to visit a lot of them. Much time is spent dealing with Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law. We're not going to look at Naomi much today. There's a thought I want to get to, and really I ought to read most of chapter number 2, but for sake of time, I'll just pick up the reading in verse number 8. The Bible says, Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter, go not to glean in another field? Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Lord, we are thankful that on this uh, dreary, rainy day we can come into the house of God where the sun, the S-O-N, is always shining. Yeah. And Father, we come this morning with thankful hearts for the blessings and the benefits that daily you bestow upon us, so undeserved but so much appreciated. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes that you would sit down amongst us, that you would heed to us, uh, and you would speak to us, and God, you would show us your tender mercy and loving kindness. May the Word of God lodge deep in our hearts, and may it flourish into something that transforms us into thy likeness. Now, Father, I do want to thank you for the good singing, the good Sunday school hour. I want to thank you for the good fellowship. Lord, I want to thank you for these in attendance today. You know our downsitting, our uprising. You know what we have been facing. You know what we are facing today. You know what we will face tomorrow. So, Father, I pray you'd speak to hearts. I pray for that one that may be here struggling, that, Lord, you would strengthen them. That one that may be seeking, may they find the answers to what they're seeking. Lord, I pray for those that may be in our midst that are unsaved. They're strangers to the grace of God. I pray today you'd reveal yourself unto them, and I pray we'd see them birthed into the family of God. Father, I do pray if there's any other need here today that you'd be with them. Father, I pray for the sick and afflicted. I pray for Miss Carol. You'd touch her. I pray for Miss Kathy, who's sick and couldn't be here this morning. I pray for this little boy, Jameer. You know what he is facing. I pray for him. Father, I pray for others that are sick and providentially hindered and those that are traveling. You'd be with them. But, Father, now for the next few minutes, I pray you'd put a hedge about this building. God, I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place, and I pray you'd show up in a big and a mighty way. And I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. You'd glorify your name. And I pray you'd speak to every heart. Lord, I pray you'd get the preeminence and the honor and the glory from everything that's said and done. Again, use this unworthy vessel. Help me to say everything you'd have me to say and nothing that you wouldn't have me to say. And Father, we'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads again and thank you for your goodness. Have your way now, Father, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus. We ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. I want to draw your attention, first of all, to the subject of this chapter, really of this book. It's her namesake. 
Look at verse number 2. The Bible says, And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me, go, uh, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. We find the subject of this book and of this chapter is Ruth the Moabitess. You'll find five times in this book that very phrase is mentioned, Ruth the Moabitess. If you're a study of the Bible, you understand that uh, there's a study in the Bible called numerology. And the number five always represents the grace of God. Uh, can I say, uh, 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 Ruth is a Moabitess. Uh, she has uh, no right to God. She has no access to God outside God's grace. Uh, can I say here today that you and I, when we were lost without God, we had no right to God. Uh, and we had no access to God outside the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and Him showing grace and favor uh, unto us. We see the subject uh, uh, in this chapter. I want you to notice the Savior in this chapter. Look in verse number 8. Uh, the Bible says, Then said Boaz uh, unto Ruth. Uh, we find Boaz is the Savior in this uh, chapter and in this story. Uh, 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 Boaz's name means strength. Uh, he's a strong one. Uh, and can I say, uh, he represents uh, our heavenly Savior, uh, who is the rock of ages. They don't get any stronger than him. Uh, but in order for Boaz to be the Savior uh, of Ruth, uh, in order for Boaz to be able to redeem Ruth, uh, there had to be certain qualifications met. Uh, First of all, uh, in order for him to redeem anybody, they had to be in his family. Uh, uh, that's very important. Uh, uh, secondly, in order for him to redeem, he had to have the finances uh, to redeem uh, uh, this individual. Uh, and then, in order for him to redeem, the in individual who needed to be redeemed uh, had to find his favor. He had to have favor on them. Uh, look in chapter number 1, it said... Uh, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, uh, a mighty man of wealth uh, of the family of Elimedek, uh, whose name was Boaz. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, Ruth's in the right family. Uh, uh, Ruth's uh, got a, a redeemer who's very wealthy. Uh, now all she had to do was find his favor. Uh, we see the subject. Uh, we see the Savior. Uh, notice the security uh, that is afforded Ruth in verse number 12. Look what the Bible says. Uh, the Lord recompense thy work, uh, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, uh, under whose wings uh, thou art come to trust. Uh, can I say there's no safer place? Uh, there's no more secure place that you can ever find yourself uh, uh, other than under the wings uh, of Almighty God. Uh, uh, friend, if you're under His wings, uh, nothing can befall you uh, that will overcome you. Uh, what a blessing to know Him uh, and to be trusting uh, in His wings. Uh, uh, but then I want you to notice the sheaves that she's able to glean in this chapter. Uh, in verse number 15, the Bible says... Uh, and when she was risen up to glean, uh, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, uh, and reproach her not. Uh, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, uh, and leave them that she may glean them, uh, and rebuke her not. Uh, now let me set the table for you to stage what's going on right here. Uh, uh, Ruth uh, 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 has come uh, 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 back to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Uh, you have to understand that some ten years prior to this, uh, uh, Limedek uh, and his wife Naomi uh, and their two sons, Malon and Chilion, uh, left Bethlehem to go down to Moab. Uh, there had been a famine come into the land, uh, and they heard there was some bread down in Moab, uh, and they thought that it would be best for their family if they left uh, and sought some bread uh, down in Moab. Uh, now let me just help you with something. Uh, Bethlehem uh, literally means the house of bread. Uh, Moab is always a picture uh, of the flesh uh, and of the world. Uh, uh, why would God's people uh, ever want to leave the house of bread for the world uh, and what the world has to offer? Uh, uh, could I say it didn't turn out too well for them? Uh, when 
whenever you leave the house of bread uh, seeking something from the world uh, and you're a child of God it never turns out good uh, 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 all you need uh, you'll find in the Lord uh, David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken uh, nor his seed begging bread uh, uh, but can I say this they get down there uh, and Elimelech the father dies uh, uh, we find that uh, Malon and Chilion both take wives of that land uh, 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 and we find that uh, they're there ten years uh, and both of those boys die uh, uh, so here's Naomi uh, she follows her husband to Moab uh, she loses her husband uh, she loses both her uh, sons uh, at the end of chapter one she comes back to Bethlehem uh, and she said don't call me Naomi anymore uh, call me Mara uh, for I went out full uh, and I came back empty uh, Mara means bitterness uh, she went out blessed and she comes back bitter uh, now uh, we get to chapter number 2 uh, here's Ruth she's the daughter-in-law of Naomi uh, uh, she's in a strange land uh, she has no right to the things of God uh, but they had a law in Israel what a blessing God makes provision uh, they had a law in Israel uh, that if you had a field uh, that you would not glean uh, uh, the corners of the field you'd leave uh, 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 whatever you was growing whether it was corn or whether it was wheat uh, you'd leave the corners uh, unchecked in case a stranger just happened to come through uh, and needed something to eat uh, that they could go to the corners of your field and glean uh, at no hurt or harm to them uh, now we get here to uh, verse 15 and 16 uh, here's Ruth uh, she's a stranger uh, she's come to Boaz's field uh, and Boaz uh, uh, he looks at the men uh, uh, that are over his fields uh, he said don't let her go to the corners uh, let her glean uh, in the best parts of the field uh, and then some of you men uh, you just throw out a little extra handfuls of purpose on her uh, and when she gets thirsty uh, let her drink from our water vessels uh, if she has a need make sure you meet her need uh, hey I want to tell you something uh, I'm glad that every now and then uh, uh, even though we have no right to the blessings of God uh, he just throws some handfuls of purpose our way uh, throws some goodness our way uh, uh, just watches over us beyond our deserving uh, now notice something about these sheaves she gleaned where she had not sown she gained where she had nothing to offer but she also gave look in verse number 18 the Bible says and she took, uh, took it up and went into the city uh, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned uh, and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after that she it was sufficed uh, what she do uh, uh, she took what she gleaned and she went and she gave it to her mother-in-law take care of her mother-in-law uh, isn't it good when people just share what God's done for them I'm interested in verse number 10 the Bible says then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me seeing I'm a stranger I'm going to preach with God's help for just a few minutes this morning on she found grace she went looking for some wheat <laughs> and she found grace <laughs> hey I don't know about you uh, hey but there was a day uh, I came to the house of God I wasn't looking for him uh, but I'm glad he was there looking for me uh, and that day I didn't get what I deserved I got grace uh, hey I deserve to die and go to hell uh, I deserve to be punished for my sins uh, but I didn't get that I got the best that God could ever offer uh, hey God's richness at Christ's expense uh, Jesus became my savior and died for my sin and I received the grace of God uh, notice some things in this wonderful book of Ruth about the fact that she found grace can I say first of all she found grace exhibited in her family Ruth chapter 1 verse four, uh, 16 says this and Ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither, the, whither thou goest I will go and whither thou lodgest I will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy God my God 
When Naomi lost her two boys, she told her two daughter-in-laws, go back to your people, go back to your gods, I'm going back to Bethlehem. And Opa, the one, uh, she said, okay, I'm gone. But not Ruth. Ruth said, don't bid me to go back to my people. Wherever you go, I'm going. Where you lodge, I go, I'm going to lodge. Your people shall be my people. And here's what she said, your God shall be my God. Now get a hold of this. She didn't know anything about God. She was a pagan. She was raised to believe anything but the God of Israel. But she fell for a fella and married him. And she got in a family that started teaching her something about the God of Israel. And when she suffered the greatest loss of her life, she said, I've done heard enough about your God that wherever you go, I'm a going. Wherever you lodge, I'm a going to lodge. Uh, whoever your people are going to be, that's my people because uh, your God shall be my God. Uh, grace was extended unto her because of the family she uh, was adopted into. Are you listening? Uh, hey, some of you... Uh, had you not met somebody, uh, had you not become part of a family, uh, you may have never heard about God, uh, never heard about the grace of God. Uh, you'd been out there serving some false god or some religion uh, or just being a heathen. Uh, hey, but hey, thanks be unto God, uh, He worked and orchestrated in your life uh, and put somebody in your life, whether related to or not, uh, that told you about God. Uh, and grace was extended to you because because of that can I say she found grace exhibited there was something in those people's lives she knew she didn't have hmm. listen some of you are here today because God put somebody in your way that you saw something in their life you didn't have but you longed to get it we seen grace was exhibited in her family and I say, secondly, grace was extended to her in the field. Again, in verse number 10, she says, Why have I found grace in thy sight? Uh, out there in the field, grace was extended to her. Can I say, it, it amazes me how God just shows up in everyday, ordinary places. Hmm? Uh, now, if you're a stranger to the Bible, the Bible makes it very clear outside the walls of the church is the mission field. You was out there in the field somewhere and somebody showed up and extended grace to you. Somebody gave you a gospel track. Somebody invited you to church. Somebody told you about how Jesus changed their life and he'll change your life. Uh, somebody shared with you the grace of God. Grace was extended to her in the field. Again, she was undeserving. She was a stranger. But he showed her grace. Didn't give her what she deserved. Could have kicked her off his property. Showed her grace. She was undeserving. Can I say this? She was undistinguished. Mm, there was nothing special about Ruth. She was just ordinary. Can I say? I look around here. There wasn't nothing special about us. Uh, you can put lipstick on a pig in a pink shirt. He's still a pig. Huh? There's nothing special about us. And there's nobody noble here. There's nobody honorable here. There's nobody anything here. Uh, but see, you're looking on the natural man. Those who have been saved by the grace of God, oh, there is something special about them. They are of a royal priesthood. Uh, they are of a chosen generation. Uh, they are of, uh, of the family of God. They've been adopted into God's family. They're children of God. Uh, and honey, wait do you see them on the other side. Uh, they're going to look just like Christ, huh? Can I say she was undisturbing? She was undistinguished. But can I say this? She was undue. The word undue means she was improper. She was illegal. Uh, the law was against her. Mm. Can I say? Pay attention right here. Under the law, no Mo Moabite was to be received. She's Ruth the Moabitess. Under the law, she's guilty, and she was not to be received into the fellowship of the Jews. Deuteronomy 23.3 An Ammonite 
or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation, they shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Hmm. She was illegally there, Brother Donald, but grace was extended. Hmm. Uh, Brother John, there was a handwriting of ordinances against us. Some 600 laws, Brother Brian, that we were guilty of. Uh, I see the law was given, the Old Testament was given. Most people know the Ten Commandments. Uh, yeah, uh, the only reason they bring out ten, Brother Clint, is because uh, 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 they can't keep them, let alone all the other you know, 600 and something of them. Uh, 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 but listen, the, the law was given for, for our schoolmaster to show us that we couldn't be holy. Uh, uh, there's nobody that can kick down the door of heaven and walk in and say, I deserve to be here. Uh, we're undeserving. Uh, we're undistinguished. Uh, and we're undue. Uh, 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 we were uh, 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 facing the law, facing the judge. His name is Jesus. Uh, and the law was contrary to us. Uh, uh, we were illegally there. Uh, 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 we could not make it uh, uh, to glory. Uh, uh, the law said we were guilty uh, uh, and mercy. See, uh, I came and said, even though they're guilty, uh, I think you ought to extend some grace. Uh, and hey, uh, uh, the lawgiver, Jesus, uh, took all the ordinances against us, uh, all the laws we broke, uh, all the sin we'd committed, uh, and he nailed them to his cross, uh, and he bled and died and shed his blood uh, uh, to be our propitiation. Uh, and that day when somebody in the field told you about the Lord, uh, he extended grace to you, uh, made a way, uh, even though you don't deserve it, uh, even though you're undistinguished, uh, even though you were a sinner, bound for hell uh, he extended grace uh, and made a way uh, where you could be redeemed and not have to die and go there not only was grace exhibited to her it was extended to her and I say thirdly this is important grace was embraced by her mm. listen you breathe in God's air. God's extending grace to you. Uh, but until you embrace the grace, it merits you nothing. Uh, in Ruth chapter 3, verse 14, grace is embraced by her at His feet. Said, and she laid at his feet until morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And uh, he said, Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Uh, also, he said, Bring the veil uh, that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. Uh, and when she held it, he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her, and she went into the city. So, what happened? She went and laid at his feet. But all the other maids was interested in herself, and she covered his feet so his feet didn't get cold at night. What she was doing was embracing the grace at his feet. And can I say, no one's ever going to look Jesus in the eye and embrace his grace. You'll find grace at his feet. <laughs> When you humble yourself and realize you don't deserve His grace, uh, when you humble yourself and realize uh, 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 you was a stranger uh, and had no right, uh, but He loved you anyway. Uh, hey, uh, uh, listen, uh, the Jews are still God's chosen people. Uh, we're just old Gentile dogs, had no right to the things of God. Uh, hey, but God grafted in a, vine, a, a branch into the vine and made a way. Uh, we're old Tell dogs could be saved by His grace. Uh, and uh, He extended grace to us. Uh, and He shared His grace to, uh, with us. Uh, but my dear friends, He invites us all to come uh, and embrace His grace and become saved by His good grace. Uh, you can be saved today if you embrace His grace. If you receive Him as your Lord and Savior. If you receive Him as your only means of salvation. The only hope for, for Ruth was Boaz. And can I say the only hope for you and I is Jesus. Mm. We're not worthy of Him, but He loved us and died for us anyway and made a way where we could receive Him and embrace His grace. And I thought about this lastly, Brother Bob. The grace is enjoyed. And it's seen in the fruitfulness. 
In chapter number 4, verse 13, the Bible says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he, and he went in unto her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Hmm. Can I say something? When she embraced grace, she got to enjoy the fruit of grace. She became the wife to Boaz. And there was fruit in their relationship. Little Obed was born. Mm. You say, what are you saying? When you receive Christ as your Savior, you get to start enjoying grace. And there's some fruit that comes from grace. All of a sudden, you start seeing others want what you got. And all of a sudden, you see others blessed by what you got. But one of these days, happy day, happy day, we're going to a marriage supper. And we're going to be married to him. Hallelujah. We're the bride of Christ. Uh, one of these days, we're going to be married to him forevermore uh, and enjoy the blessings forever with him in glory. This whole book's about grace and about a kinsman redeemer. Now, you may think, preacher, why would you preach on Ruth? Ruth is very important to you and I. You see, Jesus became man's kinsman redeemer. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You see, Brother Aaron, the reason Jesus was born in that manger and we celebrate at Christmas time, you see, that's when, not when he started. We would know that. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of earth. He's the son of God. He's always been. John tells us he made everything that was made. But he left glory, walked into the womb of that virgin, was born and robed in flesh because, Brother Bob, he had to become like us in order for us to become like him. And he, he made a way. But see, you had to be in the family. He was born to Jews. Well, we're not Jews. Well, that's where Ruth comes in. If you go back to Matthew chapter 1 and study the genealogy of Christ, you'll find little Obed's there. You'll find Ruth is in the lineage of Christ. You see, in order for him to redeem Gentiles, had to be a Gentile in his lineage, and there's Ruth. Because she found grace, hallelujah. You and I can find grace. Uh, and he made a way where we could be redeemed. huh? In order to be a redeemer, he had to be in a family. In order to be a redeemer, he had to be able to afford us. And he paid a debt we couldn't pay. And he paid a debt no one else could pay. He shed his precious blood on Calvary to buy our pardon and our redemption. Uh, but then you had to find favor. Brother Bob, the psalmist said it best when he says, uh, uh, Who am I but the Lord? Huh? Even Mephibosheth said, Who am I that the king would care about such a dead dog as I? Uh, yet Jeremiah tells us he's loved us with an everlasting love. Brother Tommy, I don't know why he loves us. 1 John 4, 19 says we love him because he first loved us. I don't know what he looked and saw in us, Brother Josh, but hang around, because one of these days, we're going to look just like him. Right now, we're robed in his righteousness. And when we get saved, we're justified by faith, robed in his righteousness, uh, 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 we're engraved in his palm uh, 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 our name's written down in heaven uh, and I said this before uh, brother Sidney Weaver preaches on this uh, 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 right now we're living in our practical you just see us as we are but our positional is in heaven our, our name's recorded there our citizenship is there our conversation is there and one day our practical is going to catch up with our positional uh, and hey neighbor wait till that day but why he loves us, I don't know. But Jim, why he loved you, I don't know. But he did. Now here's the key, Brother Chad. 
He can never love you any more than He loves you right now. And He can never love you any less than He loves you right now. Because He just loves you in the perfect love of God. You found favor with Jesus. You say, preacher, you don't, you, don't, uh, you don't know my life. You don't know how big a sinner I am. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've seen, what I've partaken. It don't matter. He still loves you. Uh, the apostle Paul said that when God saved him, he saved the chief of sinners. And if he can save the chief, he can save all the rest of us little engines running around. Are you listening? Uh, he paid a price for you. You was on the auction block of sin, Brother Tommy. Nobody wanted you. You was bound to die in your sin and die and pay for your own sins in hell. But Jesus come by and said, I'll pay his debt. And he did. Uh, and sinner friend, he paid your debt. All he's waiting for you to do is embrace his grace and receive him as your Lord and Savior. He's done all the work. He could afford you. You're in the right family. You're in his family because uh, he was made like us. And can I say this? He loves you. You found favor. He's extended grace to you. And all he asks in return is that you love him like he loves you. Hmm? Greatest love story ever written is the Bible. That the great God of heaven would love us and send his only begotten son to die for us that we can have a relationship with the one that made us. He loves you, friend, and he wants to save you if you're not saved. If you're saved, he wants your relationship to be so wonderful that it shows on you and that you can't help to tell others about the great grace you've received. So I wonder today, do you know the Lord? Have you ever embraced his grace? Have you ever received him as your Lord and Savior? Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. Well, it's just as simple as what we saw here in the scriptures. Boaz showed kindness to Ruth and just, just threw some extra sheaves in her way, and she just gathered them up. She just reached out and got them. All you need to do to be saved is reach out and get him. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. If you come, we'll have somebody take, you, take the Bible and show you exactly how to be saved. You can be saved today. You can be a recipient of God's grace. You can have your name written down in heaven. You can have your sins forgiven. And you can know that when this life is over, you'll spend it in eternity with the Lord, the one who loved you. Friend, you can, you can, be, you can be a recipient of grace just like Ruth was. But it's up to you. Grace has been extended. God's done all that he needs to do. He paid your sin debt. He's allowed somebody to tell you about himself. He allowed you to be here this morning and hear about the grace of God. And he's done all that he needs to do. Now it's up to you and I. Will you receive his grace? Say, preacher, I've been saved. Wonderful. Are you a testimony of his grace? Do others see the grace of God in you? Because what we have is exactly what the world needs. You know what will solve the race problem in America? Grace. You know what will solve the hate problem in America? Grace. You know what will solve the government problem in America? Grace. Jesus Christ is the answer for it all. They can make all the laws they want to make. It's not going to change people. The only thing that changes people is, is Jesus. If we can just give them to him, he'll change them. And everything's different then. Huh? I wonder this morning, do you know him? If not, you can. We're going to have an invitation. If you want to be saved, you come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. Let's all stand for Brother Clint. Come get a song of invitation. How long has it been since you thanked him for your grace? How long has it been since you've told him you love him? How long has it been since you appreciate the goodness and grace of God? Folks are coming and praying. While they come, get a song ready. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the wonderful example of grace in the book of Ruth. And God, we know we didn't do it justice. Lord, I pray you take our inability and you'd help somebody today. I pray for somebody here today, strangers to the grace of God, they'd come and get born again. Help them to see how much you loved them and what you're willing to do for them. I pray for those that have been redeemed. God, you'd just give them an extra portion, some handfuls on purpose, so they can show others the good grace of God. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.